and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arshna Solanki. Here are the headlines we're tracking this evening. While swings on the Lal Street, Sensex and Nifty end the week with marginal gains, Nifty Bank rallies 3%, posting the biggest weekly gain so far in 2024. Global IT major Accenture narrows its full-year growth outlook after quarterly revenue declines by a percent, but New Deal wins and increasing AI adoption spark hopes of a demand revival. Quick commerce startup Zepto raises $665 million as it gears up for an IPO. The fund raising values Zepto at $3.6 billion, almost triple its valuation a year ago. Farmer bodies and agri economists meet the finance minister ahead of the union budget, urge the centre to revisit minimum support prices in consultation with the community, seeks a hike in PM Kisan installment amount, also demand that the export ban on rice and onions be lifted. Opposition party student unions take to the streets to protest against the alleged need paper leak and cancellation of UGC net exam. The Congress holds protests in Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, Telangana and Assam. The Supreme Court refuses to stay need counselling. I think this is the decade of India and the century for India. India will become the largest economy in the world. John Chambers expects India to become the largest economy in the world this century. The chairman of U.S.-India Strategic Partnership Forum says this decade and this century belong to India. That's an exclusive. Setback for Arvind Kejriwal as Delhi High Court stays his bail granted by the trial court. High Court says bail order will not be effective until the High Court hears ED's arguments. Trial Court's bail order slams ED, says Kejriwal hasn't been proven guilty yet and the agency is not acting without bias. Israel deepens its offensive in Rafah, firing from drones, planes, tanks and naval boats, killing and injuring several people. UN experts warn arms manufacturers, including Boeing, Caterpillar and Lockheed Martin, that transferring any weapons or weapon components to Israel could make them complicit in serious violations of international humanitarian law. And today is the 10th International Yoga Day. Prime Minister Modi marks the occasion in Srinagar. Right, uh, straight to the day's market action. A roller coaster ride on the last street. Sensex moved 1,000 points in today only to end with cuts of over 260 points. The Nifty lost over 60 points for the week. Both the indices ended marginally in the green. Nifty Bank Index saw some cuts on Friday but gained over 3% this week. The biggest gain in 2020 so far. Right, uh, global IT major Accenture has narrowed its full-year guidance after its revenue dipped by 1% in the third quarter. But strong deal wins and increasing AI adoption sparked hopes of a demand revival. In fact, all Indian IT stocks gained in trade thanks to the positive rub-off from Accenture. But not all brokerages are convinced about a demand upswing for IT companies. Hormaz Fatakia is here with the Accenture numbers and what it could mean for Indian IT. Hormaz. Well, there was a bit of a cheer for IT companies, but that euphoria died down slightly towards the close of trade. Although all of these Indian IT companies, be it Infosys, TCS, Wipro, ended the day with gains, but they ended significantly off the highs of the day. But the gains earlier in the day came because of Accenture's numbers and primarily because of the fact that the guidance, which they had cut significantly in the previous quarter, was only revised this time around. They upped the lower end of the guidance, they cut the higher end by around 50 bips each, and now it's a 1.5 to 2.5 percent guidance for FY24 when it comes to revenue growth for Accenture. Now, bookings also over $21 billion, up 26% in constant currency terms. That was another positive. There was significant emphasis on AI, $900 million worth of deal wins in the third quarter. Revenue also already at $500 million compared to $100 million that they had all of in, 2020, in FY23. So that's another positive as well. But Morgan Stanley believes that the data points, the positive data points from this is the fact that the strategy and consulting business returning to growth is a positive and they are also seeing this as another confirmation of the growth rates bottoming out in the sector. But CLSA though is cautious that the lack of uh, the guidance cut, that the, the, the lack of guidance cut is a positive but they do not see any material change to these Indian IT companies in terms of the earnings this quarter. They expect it to be similar compared to the March quarter itself. 
and they also expect some downgrades to their consensus EPS estimates. Then Nomura also remains uh, cautious because the discretionary demand revival uh, is still some time away. The management also alluded to that in their earnings call and they, uh, Tech Mahindra being their top large cap pick, Coforge, Billasoft and Eclux being their top mid cap recommendations and they have their reduced rating on TCS, Wipro, LTI, Mindtree, LTTS and Emphasis. So overall brokerages still remain on the cautious side. The street somewhat cheered the results but over now to these IT companies to deliver in the June quarter. All right, uh, thank you, Hormaz, uh, for that update. Uh, moving on, quick commerce startup Zepto has raised $665 million as it gears up for an IPO. The fund raising values uh, Zepto at $3.6 billion, almost triple its valuation a year ago. Shruti Bishra joins us now. Shruti, tell us more about the fundraise. Absolutely, that's right. Quick commerce company Zepto has raised $665 million at a $3.6 billion valuation just nine months after the company raised $235 million at a $1.4 billion valuation. Now, this Series F funding round saw Avenir, Lightspeed and Avra Capital join the company's cap table as new investors. In terms of business performance, Zepto has achieved near EBITDA positivity with 140% year-on-year -year growth on a base of over $1 billion in annualized GMV. The company claims about 75% of Zepto stores are now fully EBITDA positive as of May 2024, and over 70% of its orders are now coming from its subscription service, Zepto Pass. With 6 lakh new customers joining the quick commerce platform every month, co-founder Adit Palicha also told me that Zepto will be IPO ready in calendar year 2025. The venture also plans to hire top talent across engineering products Product, growth finance operations and category management verticals. Also note, this fundraise marks the formal launch of Avra Capital, a growth equity fund started by Anu Hariharan, the former managing director of Y Combinator Continuity. Now, Zepto is the firm's first investment globally. Here's a slice of the conversation I had with Adit Palicha earlier today. We've been able to successfully raise the organic rate of new customer acquisition. I mean, we've been able to scale new customer acquisition from you know three lakh, three lakh new customers a month to now about well over six lakh new customers a month. So that you know addition still primarily driven you know through organic means with obviously some supplement from you know paid marketing. But that's that's been you know one big driver of success, right? New customer acquisition, and we've seen that drive not just overall platform growth, but same store sales growth. Within our existing network of dark stores, we've been able to drive you know, orders per day up from you know, around 1,000 orders per day to now you know, 50 to 70% higher. You know, we're definitely trying to build out all the infrastructure we need to be a public ready company. First, even on the commercial side, right? what we've done in terms of proving to investors that we can operate at EBITDA break even or you know, around that, uh, that level, even while continuing to grow the business, that's obviously one big milestone that you, know, you need to have to be a public credit company. Uh, and we are trying to push for an IPO as soon as possible. And the ambition is sooner rather than later, like I mentioned. So hopefully it's within 2025 and we, we should have all the infrastructure ready to go public by then. And you can uh, catch the full interview with Zepto CEO at 6.30 p.m. on Startup Street right here on CNBC TV 18. All right, uh, shifting tracks now. Shares of Vodafone Idea surged in trade today on the back of the telecom operator completing its 5G rollout obligation in all 17 circuits. According to a CNBC Avaaz report, the company has completed the rollout obligation in both spectrum bands and paid a penalty of 1 crore rupees as well. Network testing was carried out by the Department of Telecommunications. The telco recently raised 18,000 crore rupees via follow-on public offer. Pharma bodies met Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman ahead of the budget. We have learned that the associations have asked the government to revisit minimum support prices in consultation with the community. Sapna Das joins us with the details. Sapna, take us through what the pharma bodies have sought from the Finance Minister. Well, a host of demands have been made to the Finance Ministry and the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman in terms of a pre budget consultation that she has had with the agriculture sector. Uh, so basically starting off with the first one uh, and across the board demand has come in terms of increasing the capital spend for research and development for the agriculture sector 
particularly because the sector has also been badly impacted by the climate change. For instance, one of the in industry experts shared a number that around 30 million kilograms of tea produced has been lost to climate change. So that's one. Uh, second, also, MSP was a point of discussion. Uh, the farmer lobby wants the government to revisit not just the MSP rates, but the way the rates are decided. Uh, you know, they are of the view that probably the cost of production is not being covered uh, across the country because basically it varies state to state depending on the weather vagaries as well. So they want a complete revisit on that count. Third, uh, in terms of uh, better targeting by agriculture subsidies, your agriculture expo experts as well as the uh, farmer lobby said very clearly that uh, tenant farmers should also be included and a national portal, some kind of database should be set up where uh, better targeting of subsidies happens also for tenant farmers and the high net worth farmers should be weeded out. Uh, they also want the PM Kisan installments to be increased because the PM Kisan scheme was earlier rolled out way back in 1819, so those rates are old. They want it to become uh, you know, in tune with the current prices. Last but not the least, there's also demand to, uh, especially by agriculture experts, to basically do away with the rice and onion export bans particularly on the onion export front, uh, the view of the agriculture experts is that farmers have been badly impacted if you compare the rates at which they have been selling the onions and the kind of MEP that has been imposed. So all of these are critical, uh, you know, in terms of the agriculture sector. We have to wait and watch and see what really pans out. And let's just listen into some of the expert voices after that uh, uh, pre-budget uh, meeting with the finance minister. Unless the spade work is done, to identify the tenants because most of our tenancy is oral tenancy. So you have to use the satellite images and combine it with the Patwari information and also open a portal for the tenants to report that this plot I am tilling and therefore the benefit should come to me rather than the person who is the owner and sitting in maybe in another country. Absolutely. Right? So whether it is PM Kisan or whether it is a fertilizer subsidy. It requires a, uh, you know, clear thought and perseverance to do that. It can be done. China has done it. Article 323 to BG may tribunal ki ये सरकार को अपने हाथ में रखना है कृषि मंत्रालय के जरिए ये सरकार को अपने हाथ में सीएसपी और उसके भाव किसानों के भाव उनको अपने हाथ में रखना है ये सब बाबू लोगों को करप्शन करने के लिए ये सब्सिडी किसान के नाम पे दी ही जा रही है तो इसका हमको कुछ फायदा नहीं और जो एक्सपोर्ट के बारे में कह दिया ये एक्सपोर्ट बैन हटाओ दुनिया का बाजार में जो मिलता है वो हमको देने दे, लेने दो किसान को एमएसपी के नाम पर और उसका वास्तविक लागत कैलकुलेशन हो ताकि उसको लाभकारी मूल्य मिले मूल्य तो कम से कम मिले एक जैसा सब जगह नहीं हो सकता ये गलत है कहीं पानी का बहुत आए तो कहीं पानी का अभाव है सिंचाई के बिना और किसाई के से खराब हो जाए फसल इसलिए सब जगह एक लागू हो ही नहीं सकता एक फॉर्मूला ये इस चीज को छोड़ो लागत के आधार पर लाभकारी मूल्य all the efforts of the agriculture ministry, the ICR system and the farmers themselves have been defeated by not increasing the price of urea and freezing that so oversubsidized urea is overused. So that ideal ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus, potash which can make soil healthy to support better agriculture production that is defeated so money is going down the drain and moment pollution is in addition. So this has to be revisited and revisiting that also means educating the farmers about how to use it. The other big story that we are tracking, opposition leaders and student unions have intensified their protests against the cancellation of the UGC national eligibility test and an alleged neat paper leak. The Congress party held protests in Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, Telangana, Assam and other states. The government scrapped UGC net on Wednesday, saying that it had received inputs that the exam's integrity may have been compromised. This came only a day after over 9 lakh candidates across India appeared for the exam. The CBI has registered a case against unknown persons based on the ministry's complaint. Yesterday, Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said that the question paper of UGC net was leaked on the dark net and circulated on Telegram. He said this was an institutional failure of the National Testing Agency, an autonomous agency under the Education Ministry which is responsible for conducting both the UGC net and the NEET examinations. The government plans to form a high-level committee to look into the functioning of the agency. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has once again declined to stay the process of need counselling and issued notice to the NTA in the matter.
छात्र छात्राओं के भविष्य के साथ खिलवाड़ किया गया और ये पेपर लीक कोई दस लाख बीस लाख तीस लाख की बात नहीं है ये हजारों करोड़ का घोटाला हुआ है इस सड़े गड़े व्यवस्था में सुधार कब होगी और उसके लिए सुधार के लिए आपने नेट लाया था आज वही घेरे में है और उसी को जांच करने की जिम्मेदारी दे रहे हैं ऐसे परीक्षा में इस तरह की अनियमित होना और मिनिस्टर को इसकी मालूम भी नहीं होना क्योंकि मिनिस्टर ने पहले कहा कि ऐसे कुछ हुआ ही नहीं है सिर्फ ग्रेस मार्क का मामला है पेपर लीक नहीं हुआ है कुछ भी नहीं हुआ है फिर माननीय सर्वोच्च न्यायालय को इसमें आना पड़ा सर्वोच्च न्यायालय ने यह कहा कि भैया ये पेपर जो है इसमें वापस से लिया जाए पहले तो आपको नैतिकता लेके इसकी जो जिम्मेदारी लेके आपको राजीनामा देना चाहिए हमारी पहली मांग है Right on to a CNBC TV18 exclusive. John Chambers expects India to become the largest economy in the world this century. Speaking to Shireen Bhan, the chairman of US India Strategic Partnership Forum said that the decade and the century will belong to India. The former Cisco executive added that the growth of Nvidia is indicative of how fast artificial intelligence is growing. Speaking of startups and high tech, uh, you know the Wall Street Journal has a front page today on comparing what you did with Cisco and what's happening at Nvidia today. Yes. And Cisco was in 2000 the most valued company in the world on the back of the big transition that we saw then with the internet. And that's what we're seeing happen with Nvidia becoming the most valued company. As people draw these comparisons, yes. what's going through your mind? Well, first of all, uh, it shows you that technology uh, moved from something. That the techies did, to impacting every one of our lives. So, with the internet changing the way you work, live, learn, and play, when I said that in '93, most people said, "No, it's techies talking." It clearly did. Uh, as you watch, there's new generations of leaders about every 10 or 20 years, and so, and I think it's very healthy. So, it's Cisco for the internet, then about four or five players for the cloud, and now Nvidia is clearly leading in terms of AI, and they're kind of like. The indication of the infrastructure of AI. If you want to know how AI is doing, look at how fast Nvidia is growing, and it is growing great. What is it, 540 percent in the last two years? Today, if you're not into AI and if you haven't got a good AI strategy and well implementation, uh, investors won't invest in your company, even if you're a manufacturing company or a semiconductor company, etc. Uh, the pace of change, however, is different. It's about ten times faster and can be ten times bigger than what we saw just a few, a few decades ago. So, you know, you've been a big champion and a big believer in the India story, but there's a long distance still to go to fully realize the potential of this partnership and this relationship. Where do you believe it's being constrained today? As the largest democracy, watching your elections just occurred, and congratulations to Prime Minister Modi. Uh, it was a smooth election. There was no issues in the market, uh, and I think that's a model for the rest of the world's democracy to follow. And now you're seeing the country lead in innovation. My challenge is, don't. Don't be satisfied with just what we're doing. We've got to dream bigger in terms of the overall approach. So this is what I really think about in terms of where we are today. I think we've got to look at where we go. I do think it will be the century for India. I think it will be also the decade for India. And you can catch that exclusive conversation at 7:30 and 9:30 p.m. only on CNBC TV18. Right, it's time for a short break. Coming up next, glimpses of the International Yoga Day being celebrated globally. Stay tuned. Welcome back. North India continues to sizzle as rainfalls are delayed across states. 143 people have died across India, and over 40,000 people have suffered heat stroke since March. The casualty list, however, could be higher. Uttar Pradesh is uh, the worst affected area with 35 deaths. However, Delhi received a fresh spell of rain, bringing huge respite. About 18 districts in Maharashtra have seen deficit rainfall so far. The Med Department has predicted rains to cover the entire state by 25th of June. Onset of 
monsoon happened two days in advance and monsoon reached Mumbai also two days ahead of its schedule. But since then, its progression is stalled. Right now, we are being joined by Mr. Sunil Kamle, head of Western Zone IMD. Thanks a lot for talking to us, sir. We are not talking at a very happy moment. Okay. If you can help us explain how exactly monsoon is placed right now and what's the current situation. Yeah, monsoon has come on right time actually in the Kerala two days uh, well in advance. And if you see the, uh, if you monitor Mumbai also, we have received the monsoon two days in advance. But uh, that time wind strength was very good and monsoon has progressed well in time. But when monsoon arrived in Mumbai, then uh, within two, three days we got a very good rainfall. Then after that intensity of the rainfall reduced because of the uh, wind flow, wind pattern, what uh, strengthening of the wind became weak from the Arabian Sea. That's why the monsoon has not, per uh, I mean, progressing further. So we can see that it is yet to cover the rest yeah, of Ma the entire Maharashtra. Uh, some too. some northern portion of the Maharashtra is yet to cover, mm -hmm. and but conditions are favorable. But monsoon is not progressing. Uh, we are uh, I mean lagging behind by four to five days. So ideally, uh, till what date monsoon should cover Maharashtra, and how are we placed today, sir? Actually, ideally speaking, ma monsoon should cover Maharashtra by 15th of June. So there's a delay of around yeah, one week. Yeah, one week delay is there because of the sluggish winds from the Arabian Sea. Right, uh, moving on, international news. Israeli forces have carried out deadly airstrikes across Gaza over the past 24 hours. The military attacked a home that killed eight people in the region. Tanks and drones have also pushed deeper into western Rafah, firing shells at displaced people's tents. The United Nations has warned arms manufacturers against transferring weapons to Israel, saying it could make them complicit in violations of international law carried out in Gaza. The United States has expressed concern over Russian President Vladimir Putin's suggestion that the country could provide weapons to North Korea. The U.S. State Department warned that such a move could destabilize the peninsula at a time when South Korea is considering arming Ukraine. This comes days after Putin signed a mutual defense pact with North Korea's Kim Jong-un during his visit to Pyongyang. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. would consider various measures in response to the pact. Cisco has launched Meraki India, a new cloud region which will be hosted locally within the country. This will empower businesses across India to embrace a cloud-first transformation and help customers meet their local data storage needs. Speaking to Ritu Singh on the sidelines of the launch, Daisy Chitilapilli, who is president of Cisco India and Sark, said that the company is bullish on the opportunity India presents. She also expects India to be among Cisco's top five markets in the next few years. For Cisco, of course, uh, India is one of the top 10 markets. Uh, but you spoke earlier about how the ambition is to get to the top five. Uh, how soon will it get there? How soon will it perhaps get to a higher position? What will drive this kind of growth for Cisco in India? I think what will grow the drive for Cisco in India is India's growth. Hmm. Right? We are very, very happy about the fact that the long-term forecast for growth in India continues to be robust. Hmm. If you look at the next year, which is the here and now, it's again six and a half to seven percent hmm. is the forecasted growth yeah. of the IT market and we intend to obviously be better than the average growth of the market. Uh, the facility that you're setting up in Chennai if you could bring us up to speed as to if you're on track to open it in the second half of the year how soon will we hear about the it? The good news is yes so we announced our intent to manufacture from India hmm. in May of last year hmm. and we had signaled the end of this year as being the time when the, the plant would go live. Yeah. Uh, we are on track and you should soon hear an announcement around the formal, you know, you, sh you should hear an announcement around our plans to go live very soon in the second half. And, of and what should we expect in terms of business generation opportunities, exports opportunities coming out of that facility? So we have put a near term target of a billion dollars in throughput, as okay. we have explained, that is, you know, the factory is meant to be both, uh, is meant to feed both domestic demand as well as exports. It's been 10 years since the inception of the International Yoga Day. Like every year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the celebrations in India today. The Prime Minister performed yoga on the banks of the Dal Lake in Jammu and Kashmir, along with 7,000 other participants. The theme for this year's celebration was yoga for self and society. Several other leaders, including Health Minister J.P. Nadda, Haryana Chief Minister Nayab Singh Saini, and Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, also embraced the practice of yoga. All right, uh, that's a wrap on Business 360. But as we go, here's a quick note. 
A daily wrap of the top headlines will hit your inbox every day before you call it a night. CNBC TV 18's a daily newsletter on LinkedIn featuring the top 10 stories on markets, corporate updates, economic insights and financial highlights. So subscribe.